Marvel Snap is officially out. With over 150 cards and over 60 iconic locations from the Marvel Universe, four different currencies and one heck of a grind to collect all of the cards, I wanted to put together the ultimate beginner's guide for Marvel Snap to get you started strong in the fastest card battler in the multiverse. Let's start with the gameplay. Marvel Snap's gameplay is very simple. Each card has two numbers on it, cost and power. Players get one energy on turn one, then two on turn two, etc, etc. If you've played Hearthstone before, it works the same way as mana. Instead of attack and health though, cards have a power number. Marvel Snap is more like top trumps than Hearthstone in this respect. Cards' powers get added to the location that they're played at, and at the end of the game, the player who has more power at more locations wins the match. Both players take their turns at the same time, and the turn plays out when they're both done, with the player currently in the lead playing their cards first. Really simple, but what are these locations? Three locations from the Marvel Universe are picked at random every game. Each has a different effect and games vary wildly as a result. So that's cards and locations, let's talk about snapping. gotta work on that. When a player thinks that they're going to win the game, they can snap, doubling the stakes for the game. Like poker, you can snap if you're ahead, or you can snap to bluff to trick your opponent into thinking that you're ahead so that they give up. Each player can snap once each game, and the stakes automatically double on turn six, the final turn of the game as well. Quick tip, the best thing to learn to do to rank up quickly in Marvel Snap is learn how and when to snap correctly, and also when to retreat if your opponent snapped. Thankfully, I have a video on that topic right here. Due to the way the game works with the snap mechanic, it's actually better to show as much of your power as you can as late as possible. You rank up the fastest when you can trick your opponent into thinking that they're going to win and then pull the rug out from under them. Power in each location is only counted at the end of the game, so play your big cards last whenever you can. That is the gist of the gameplay. I go much more into the gameplay in all of my other videos, so stay posted for those, but for now, Let's move on to, well, everything else. Marvel Snap is a mobile game, which means assuming you don't want to throw thousands of dollars at the game, you're going to have to participate in the grind. Personally, I find the grind in Marvel Snap pretty fun, but it can be overwhelming, at least at first. Let's break it down. The number to the right of the play button is your current rank. This ranges from rank one, recruit, all the way up to rank 100, Infinite. Infinite? Infinity? Infinite? I need to check. I always get this wrong. Infinite. You'll earn these rewards along the way, and these rewards reset every season, approximately once a month. So there's good reason to keep coming back for more. Speaking of season, here in the top left or here in the bottom right, you will find the monthly season pass. As you play the game and complete challenges, you will climb through the season pass, earning free rewards, yes, but of course, there's also a lot of rewards that you have to buy the season pass for. The season pass is real money only, unfortunately. But it does come with one exclusive card every month. This month, that card is Mars Morales, and it is only available through the season pass. Though next month, it will be added to the regular card pool, along with everything else. Yep, I'll get into how you get other new cards soon. Just bear with me. There's other stuff we got to get through first. Whenever you decide to purchase the season pass, you will get all of the rewards that you've already earned throughout the month. So don't worry about missing out if you decide. I'm not sure if I want to buy the season pass straight away. You can decide later. It's fine as long as you don't wait for the month to expire. On the top right corner of the home screen, you will see missions. This includes daily missions of which you get two every eight hours or six every day, along with weekly missions, which you can unlock by completing daily missions in chunks of five and season missions a little bit underneath which unlocked sporadically throughout the season. Season missions will really boost your season pass, whereas daily and weekly missions are primarily for earning credits, which you will need to unlock new cards, which I will get to after this next section. This, you gotta, this, this part has to come, for, you'll see. The second tab from the bottom left of the screen is your collection. This will include your decks and all of the cards that you've unlocked. From here, you can take your cards and upgrade them. Don't worry, these upgrades are aesthetics only. You're not gonna boost the power of a card by upgrading it. It's not quite that pay to win. But upgrading cards is vital for unlocking new cards. The cost to upgrade cards is boosters and credits. 
boosters you unlock in a variety of ways, but mostly just through playing. Each card has its own boosters, and to unlock that card's boosters, you just have to play games with that card in your deck, and you'll get them at random. There is a limit to how many boosters you can get per day, but it's so ridiculously high, you'll probably never hit it. And credits we've talked about already, you unlock by ranking up, you unlock through missions, and a few other methods. But the amount of credits you earn per day is finite. This will be your bottleneck when it comes to upgrading cards. And now we get to the point I know you've been waiting for. How do you unlock new cards in Marvel Snap? There are no booster packs in Marvel Snap. You'll unlock cards one card at a time, sort of at random. Like, it is random, but you unlock them randomly in certain buckets at a time. So for example, these are the first set of cards you'll unlock. When you've unlocked all of these in a random order, you'll start to unlock these cards. And then when you've got all of these, you'll start to unlock these cards. To unlock cards, you have to increase your collection level. That is the number right at the top, right in the middle of your home screen. This is the key indicator of your progress in the game. Your collection level will go up every time you upgrade cards. The amount that it goes up depends on how rare the card is that you've upgraded and therefore how much the card costs. The more credits and boosters you spend, the more your collection level goes up. It's as simple as that. I'm going to go more into the monetization and how to upgrade your cards and unlock new cards as efficiently as possible in a future video. Video. But for now, the key points are upgrade cards to upgrade collection level. Every now and then, when you upgrade your collection level enough, you will unlock new cards. When you first start playing, you'll unlock them quite quickly, and the more you play, the slower it gets. Honestly, I found the pace to be pretty good. It does slow down a lot later on, but you get to the point where every time you unlock a new card, it's exciting, and, and I wanted to jam it in a deck and see what I could do with it. Hopefully, you'll feel the same way. But let's talk about the store, and don't click off just yet, because there's some free stuff you're not gonna wanna miss here. In fact, every day in the store, you can claim 50 credits for free. Don't miss out on this. It really does add up over time. It's sort of your login bonus, I guess. You can also buy credits for gold, gold being the other premium currency. You will unlock bits of gold on the collection level sometimes, but also through ranking system and through the season pass. Honestly, buying credits for gold is the number one thing you're going to want to spend gold on if you want to be a free-to-play player. Well, buying credits or buying mission resets, it works out pretty much exactly the same. Also in the store, you can find card variants. These can be pretty pricey, but they can also look really, really cool. You will get variants just by playing the game over time, but if there's anything in the store that you really have to get, you can buy those with gold. And of course, this resets daily. Scrolling down, you'll find the fast upgrade section of the store. Uh, if you play a decent amount of Marvel Snap, you don't want to touch this. You're essentially trading credits which are finite with boosters which are almost infinite. If you play a lot you'll get lots of boosters. You don't want to spend your credits on boosters. It's a bad deal. And of course you can buy gold for real money which is if you want to spend money on the game how are you going to need to go about doing that. I got through as much as I could as quickly as I could but if you want to learn more about how to rank up effectively you're going to need to learn more about the snap mechanic in which case you should click this video here. I'll be covering all sorts of videos about how to level up in the early days of Marvel Snap good practices in, in game, how to do it efficiently, etc. All of that stuff very, very soon. Stay tuned to this channel and I'll see you in the next one.